From Hollywood, it's time now for... Johnny Dollar. Hi, Johnny. Say, didn't you tell me one time that you're quite a nut about fishing? What's that? Pat McCracken at Universal Adjustment Bureau. Doggone it, you know you spiked my plans for a fishing trip just a few weeks ago. Oh, yeah. All right. What's on your mind? Big fish. Real big fish. You ever hear of Douglas R. Lanfear? Uh, millionaire playboy, sportsman, yachtsman? That's the one. Well, didn't I read somewhere that he was... Yeah, you sure did, Johnny, at the bottom of the deep blue sea. And a $400,000 claim has been filed. You interested? An expense account based on that will be a pleasure. Tonight, and every weekday night, Bob Bailey and the transcribed adventures of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. From Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Universal Adjustment Bureau, Hartford, Connecticut. Following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the sea legs matter. Expense account item one, 90 cents. Taxi from my apartment to the offices of Universal Adjustment where Pat McCracken was waiting for me with a handful and a head full of information. Two claims, Johnny, both filed by Constance Lansphere, the wife. Here are copies of them. How come two, Pat? Now, number one is against Douglas Lansphere's life policy with Greater Southwest Life and Casualty Insurance Company, $250,000. Uh huh. What's the other? $150,000 International Maritime Organization for the loss of the Lansphere yacht. 400,000 claims. That's right. Okay, what's the story? Well, Landfair was making a trip along the coast of Central America in his yacht, the Sea Legs. He ran onto a rock or something, the boat sank, and he and his crew of one went down with her. Well, do you have any reason to question the uh, validity of the claim by Mrs. Landfair? Two and a half years ago, Landfair himself filed a claim with International Maritime. It seems he lost a power cruiser in exactly the same place, near the Boldaro Islands off the coast of Nicaragua. $85,000. Total loss? Happened in a spot where not one bit of the wreck could be salvaged. Oh? Uh-huh. Where'd you learn that? Local authorities in this small Nicaraguan seaport, and Mrs. Lanfear, she was with him on that trip. But she wasn't with him on this one, aboard the Sea Legs. No, or presumably she wouldn't be around to file the claim. Uh-huh. Where's Constant Lanfear now, Pat? Home, as far as I know, lives on their small estate on Long Island, out near the town of Kachog. You want to call her, talk to her? No. I think I'll go down there. Item two, 2120, fare and miscellaneous to Kutchong, Long Island. Item three, a buck even for a taxi from the little station to the Lanfear Estate. Estate, did you call it, mister? Well, isn't it? Well, it used to be, before the Lanfear sold off a lot of it. Well, that's so? Yeah, I guess there wasn't nothing else they could do to keep up with that high way of living. Keep talking, fella. Well, the old man, Lanfear's father-in-law, well, he had plenty, I guess. But after he died, all the kids seemed to do was spend it. Uh, you know what I mean? Fancy yachts, lots of polo playing, Florida in the winter, Maine in the summer, all that sort of thing. Oh, there's a place now, right up ahead there on the right. I looked, and what I saw apparently bore out what the taxi driver had said. A big stone wall surrounded what had evidently been the original, rather vast property belonging to the estate. Square in the middle of it sat what was probably once called a mansion. But small, new, modern homes were crowding in on the old house. Hello. Mrs. Lanfear? That's right. I'm Johnny Dollar. I'm representing the Universal Adjustment Bureau in Hartford. Oh, yes, of course. In connection with the insurance. Yes, ma'am. Well, won't you come in, please? Right in here, Mr. Dollar. And do pardon the looks of the place. I'm afraid I've neglected things somewhat since... Well, s- sit down, please. Thank you. I, uh... I hope you don't mind answering a few questions, Mrs. Lanfear. But since you've already filed claims on the insurance policies... Well, I'll try to be as brief as possible. I don't want to seem cold-blooded about it, Mr. Dollar, but the initial shock of losing Doug and the loss of the yacht has passed... And there's nothing to be gained in just sitting around feeling sorry for myself, particularly in view of the day-to-day problems I have to face. What uh, problems, Mrs. Lanfear? 
To be perfectly blunt about it, financial mostly. Well, I, I must say your attitude is very commendable. It's a necessary attitude under the circumstances. Now, what may I tell you? If you're sure you don't mind talking about it. I'd like to know all I can about the circumstances surrounding the sinking of the yacht. Well, I don't quite know how to start. We were on a... Well, just a pleasure cruise. You were along on this trip? Yes. That is, up until... Until the day it happened. Oh, why did Doug ever have to... I'm sorry, Mr. Dollar. Well, we were just taking our time, cruising south along the east coast of Central America, doing a little fishing. We'd often taken the sea legs down there. That's the yacht? Yes, a motor sailor. Here, on the wall. This is a picture of her. That's Doug on deck. Oh. Isn't she beautiful? 68 feet overall, 20-foot beam, solid teak decking, everything. Yes, that is a good-looking boat. Terrible to lose something as nice as that, isn't it? Uh, yes, yes. Anyhow, along the coast of Nicaragua, Doug decided to put in at San Juan del Perro. That's uh, where the sea legs had originally been built. But the sandbar formations have almost ruined San Juan as a port, so we went on up to Bluefields. Oh, yes, I understand that's now the best seaport on the Caribbean side of Nicaragua. You know that country down there? Only from what I've read. Oh. Uh, but go on, please. Well, while we were there, he had some work done on our radio equipment. We'd had trouble with it on the way down. Uh-huh. When the work was finished, of course, he wanted to try it out. He'd found a radio amateur in Puerto Gardo, so he asked me to stay on shore while he and the skipper went out to sea. We kept in contact every few minutes while he headed her out toward the, the Boldero Islands. The Boldero Islands. Isn't that where you lost a power cruiser a couple of years ago? Yes, the Connie O named after me, and I begged him not to go out there again. Why, Mrs. Lanfear? Because of the treacherous currents between the two little islands, the great deep that lies between them, a terribly dangerous spot with pinnacles of rock that reach up almost to the surface. Well, why did he go out there again? To prove a point. That's all, to prove a point. Look, I'm afraid I don't follow you. Doug had blamed the loss of the Connie O two years before on poor seamanship by the man at the wheel. He wanted to prove that he could take a boat through there safely. Oh. Kind of looks like he was wrong, doesn't it? His last words over the radio were that a rock had torn the bottom out of the sea lakes. But, oh, Mr. Dollar, before the signal stopped, I could hear the crunching of the hull and the sound of the waters that swept in and over it. It was terrible. You sent someone out there right away, of oh, course. Yes, but it was no use. The sea legs was gone. And with it went my husband. And the man with him. And the, uh, the bodies were never no. recovered? Before, when we lost the Connie O, we had time to put on life preservers, launch the small boat. I must admit, I wondered how it was. But when the sea legs went down, there wasn't time, and I could hear it over the radio, and it was terrible. It was terrible. I'm sorry. It's all right. I'm all right, Johnny. Mr. Dollar? I, uh, I may have to go down there, Mrs. Lanfear, and go through the motions of an investigation, you know. But then you'll... Uh... Your companies will pay the claims. I so see no reason now. Why not? It's terrible to have to be so frank about it. But I do need the money, Johnny. I was telling the truth. I didn't see any reason why the claims shouldn't be paid. Perhaps Connie Lanfear's explanation of why she wasn't grieving over the loss of her husband was true. But more than once, I wondered if she weren't far more concerned over the loss of the yacht or about how soon she could collect on the policies. Then that deliberate slip and starting to call me by my first name. Just what are your plans, Mrs. Lanfear? Plans, Johnny? I, I don't quite know what you mean. Well, suppose the companies make prompt payment on these claims. That'll mean $400,000. Well, really, Mr. Dollar, aren't you overstepping bounds a little bit? Maybe. But if it'll make you feel any better, or if it'll help to hasten the settlement, I'll tell you. I'll sell what is left of this property and leave the country. Leave for where? Somewhere in Europe on the continent. Alone? I beg you. Of course, alone. Sorry, I just wondered. Doug and I were too close to even think of my having boyfriends or whatever you want to call it. 
The more I think about it, the more I resent that question. No particular implication meant, Mrs. Lanford. Next thing, you'll start implying that the sea legs wasn't wrecked at all, that Doug is still alive somewhere, and that if you can't dig them up out of the sea, your precious companies can somehow contrive to keep the money that is rightfully mine, can get out of paying off on what I thought was a legitimate... The more she talked, the more I became convinced that something was very wrong about this case. I let her vent her fury on me. It was simulated fury, I thought. Then I called the taxi again and left. Oh, no, sir, mister. You're all wrong. Them land fears, they were thick as two peas in a pod. Say, tell me, did you ever notice any particular friends either of them may have had? Well, there was always throwing them big parties. That's what you mean. Big society-type brawls. No, no, I was thinking of girlfriends for him or boyfriends for her. Oh, no, sir. No, sir. He was her, she was his, and no playing around. Not like most people in that set. And I know. <laughs> I know everything goes on in cut chalk. Back in New York, I found that the best immediate routing to Nicaragua was by plane to Dallas, then to Mexico City, and finally to Managua on the West Coast. I made a reservation on the Dallas plane immediately, that's item four, and then spent $1.40, that's item five, on a phone call to Pat McCracken back in Hartford. Well, sure, Johnny, if you think it's important enough, you have my full permission. Yeah, I've already made my reservation for the first leg of the trip. Well, now, don't go overboard on the expense account. Pat, how you talk. But you really smell a rat, huh? Well, look, according to report, the land fears were real buddy-buddy. She loved him, he loved her. Yet only a couple of weeks after his death, she's a lot more concerned over the loss of their boat than she is over him. Oh? You think perhaps... Uh, I don't know what to think. Meantime, if you can afford it, why don't you have somebody keep a check on her? Well, sure, Johnny, but with what specifically in mind? I don't know. After all, I didn't have any real concrete reason for feeling that this case was fishy. It was more a hunch than anything else, but a real strong one. And I felt that after my visit to her, Connie Lanfair would do something, just what I hadn't the least idea. But whatever it was, I wanted to know about it. It was a couple of hours later that I started to pick up the telephone to order a cab to the airport. Johnny Dollar. This is Pat again, Johnny. Oh, hi. I ordered a man to keep tabs on Connie Lanfair. Good. It's your old friend, Detective Randy Singer. Fine. Hey, but you know what? What? She seems to have left town in a hurry. No trace. Uh-oh. You still going to Nicaragua? Yeah, but keep looking for her. Right. Expense account item 6, 475. Taxi and tip to LaGuardia Field, where my ticket and seat reservation were waiting for me. Within a few minutes, I was comfortably ensconced in my seat by the window. The passenger door was closed, and the big plane's engines were warming up for the trip to Dallas. Then suddenly, the cabin door opened again. A feminine figure skipped lightly in and plunked herself down on the seat next to mine. Well, how nice. Mrs. Lanfair. Surprise, Johnny? Now, here's our star to tell you about tomorrow's episode of this week's story. Tomorrow, the seeds of suspicion really begin to sprout. With the help of one of the wildest characters I ever met. Join us, won't you? Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, starring Bob Bailey, is transcribed in Hollywood. It is produced and directed by Jack Johnstone, who also wrote this week's story. Be sure to join us tomorrow night, same time and station, for the next exciting episode of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Roy Rowan speaking. Thank you.